Hi, I'm Rachel with Ally Safety. I'm a certified industrial hygienist, which means I've studied the science behind noise and I've done many, many noise measurements. Loud noises! In this video, we're gonna talk about how to conduct noise monitoring using several different sound measuring instruments to measure the noise levels in a workplace. These include sound level meters and noise dosimeters. So without further ado, let's get going. The first thing you need to know about noise is the OSHA action limit for noise. Employers are required to take action to protect hearing when the noise exposure is averaged to 85 decibels for an eight hour workday. If exposure is at or above that level, the company needs to implement a hearing conservation program and strive to prevent hearing loss through hearing protection, training, and reducing the overall workplace noise. The total exposure has to remain under 90 decibels for an eight hour day, which is the permissible exposure limit. So now that you know that, let's set up the equipment and start monitoring to see what our levels are. Sound measurement instrument settings. They're all linked in the description below if you'd like more information. OSHA regulations specify that certain settings need to be used for compliance measurements. For this video, we're gonna be using monitors from Reed Instruments. I chose Reed because they're simple, cost-effective, and easy for those who are just getting started with noise monitoring. All of these are linked in the description below if you want more information. First off, you always wanna calibrate your instruments before you start measuring to make sure that they're accurate. When it comes to decibels, a few decibels can make a big difference. This will sound every three seconds unless something isn't okay. So take off any sort of wind protector that you have on and calibrate using the calibrator that the manufacturer includes. It usually takes about a minute to make sure that it's accurate. Just follow the manufacturer's instructions and record any deviations. Okay, it looks good. Next, Set your device to A weighting. You'll see we have an A and a C on this device. A weighting is the setting that most clearly mimics the frequencies where the human ears are the most sensitive and the risk of hearing damage is the greatest. Next, set the response level to slow. Slow response means the value on the display is the one second average of the measurement. If you're using noise dosimeters, they measure the dose of noise. In that case, you'll also want to make sure that the following settings are correct. Sometimes manufacturers will have these built in and sometimes they won't. The criterion level will be at 90 dBA. The threshold level is at 80 dBA. The threshold level will be at 80 dBA for hearing conservation or set it to 90 for noise controls. The upper limit will be 115 dBA. To get a good idea of how loud your work environment is, Start by performing a walk around survey. Noise survey step one, perform a walk around survey. Sometimes when I just wanna do a simple preliminary survey, I'll start with a small sound level meter like this one. It's an easy one to keep with you either in a coat pocket or in your bag, and it's not as much space or time as this one. It's very small and simple. This one also works and can record if you wanna leave it in an area for an extended amount of time. To perform the walk around survey, a preliminary walk around survey is the first step to identifying where there are noise problems and that should be done throughout the entire facility. Do this during normal operations and if you find noise levels are 80 decibels or more, additional sound surveying is needed. I find this works best if you bring a facility map with you and write down each area's average noise level. Once you've identified the problem areas, move on to step two. Conduct detailed noise surveys. A more detailed sound level survey is the second step and a more systematic method for measuring the sound of specific equipment or tasks in a work area or near an operator's station. In this stage, you dive a little deeper into where the noise is a concern. The point is to gather this information. How noisy is each work area? Pay particular attention to operators' workstations or other areas where employees spend most of their time. What equipment or processes are generating the noise? Which employees may be exposed to the noise? How long are they exposed? Define areas where hearing protection will be required. Use dosimetry to determine noise exposure when workers move around the area or even work in different areas throughout the shift noise levels change frequently, 
or there's a significant impulse sound like nail guns and other impacts. Once you have the information, you can create a noise sampling plan, which is step three, create a noise sampling plan. The results of your noise survey and your observations of how noise fluctuates during the workday can help you develop a plan for how many measurements will need to be taken to accurately assess the noise exposures for each work area and for each job task or description. The sampling plan will identify specific tasks, job roles, or titles, or even shifts where employees may be at risk for noise exposure at or above the 85 decibels for an eight hour shift. Once you've identified the individuals that should be part of personal noise dosimetry, make it a plan to conduct an eight hour or full shift sample using noise dosimeters. I typically make a list of employees I wanna monitor each quarter and break it up throughout the year because depending on your workplace, it can be a lot of work. Generally, more samples are needed when the results of your basic survey are close to the action level of 85 decibels. Fewer samples may be needed if the sound levels in your surveys are below that 85 decibel action limit and the sound levels don't vary much. Step four, monitor employee noise exposures. The purpose of noise dosimetry is to determine a worker's eight hour time-weighted average or dose of noise for the eight hour work shift. That's why it's called dosimetry. Dosimetry is also used to measure how noise varies over the time according to the job or task. Measuring the noise exposure of employees is actually really fun and lets you talk to employees and get a much clearer picture of the type of noise levels people are exposed to at work. I always let the department leaders and shift leaders know before we conduct monitoring and I meet up with the crew in the morning to explain what we're doing and why. Remember, employees are entitled to observe the noise monitoring, according to OSHA. And after all, it's their hearing that's on the line, so it's best that they be aware and part of the process. Now, if you haven't used one before, a dosimeter is a small noise measuring device that can be worn close to the hearing zone. Some are small and clipped to the collar. This one is a bit larger and can be put in a pocket or clipped to a belt. I chose this one because it's got the lavalier mic, similar to what I'm wearing right here, which is nice for when you have workers wearing protective suits. So that way they don't need to wear the dosimeter right on their collar where it may be damaged by chemicals. Also, since I always get asked this, it's best to remind employees that dosimeters only record noise levels. They can't record what you're saying. As you're going out doing your noise monitoring, take lots of notes on what's going on operationally during the day, since different machines and tasks can result in different outcomes. Once you're done, conduct post-use calibration record the results and prepare reports for leadership and individual reports for employees who took part in noise dosimetry. What to do with the results. Employees must be notified of the results of noise monitoring. Additionally, if your results revealed levels above 90 decibels, the following chart shows allowable exposure durations at various decibel levels. For example, someone exposed to 95 decibels of noise could only be exposed for four hours. When employee noise exposures meet or exceed the OSHA action level of 85 decibels, the company also needs to implement a hearing conservation program, which includes outlining how you'll protect employee hearing, conducting training on hearing, using hearing protection and hearing conservation for employees, and providing audiometric testing. Develop and implement an ongoing noise monitoring program. Design a sampling strategy to identify employees for inclusion in the hearing conservation program. Remember, employees have the right to know about their personal noise monitoring results, so make sure they get the results in a timely manner. After this, repeat noise surveys whenever there's a change in processes, procedures, or exposure time that may lead to changes in the employee noise exposures. Many companies choose to conduct noise monitoring periodically, like every year or two, to make sure that hearing conservation programs are effective and up to date. And those are the basics of conducting noise monitoring. Remember, hearing loss is highly preventable and with a good program, you can really make a difference. Thank you for watching and until the next time, I'll see you guys later.